Hey everyone, so this is the smart camera and the hardware configuration on it is exactly the same as the one from the last episode, but I've changed the software. So now it connects to the Microsoft Azure computer vision resource. So you can do a lot of things with the computer vision resource. And what I've done is I've used the detection API, which comes up with a caption for the image and some tags. So I'll take a photo of the measuring tape and this toy car and the pen and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's the measuring tape. And the caption you can see there says a yellow measuring tape. And now I'll take a photo of this toy and I'll see what it says. There's the photo and the caption is a toy car on a table. So that's pretty clever. Okay, so I'll just give a quick recap of the way the hardware on this is, is put together. Um, and I spoke about that a bit more in a bit more detail in the last video. And in the last video, I had the neural network actually on the on the ESP32. But in this video, um, the ESP32 is connected to the Azure cloud. Um, so it does give me a little bit more power to do it that way. Um, the disadvantage of that is you've got to have it connected to wireless. And also, uh, if you exceed the number of the number of the queries that you get for free then you have to start paying but for a hobbyist for a hobby camera like this i doubt you will ever exceed the number of queries unless you're if you're continuously monitoring your environment like sending queries every second then yeah you'll you'll exceed it quite easily and you'll have to end up paying but um i haven't paid any money to them and if you're going to sign up for an account um just, I wouldn't recommend giving them any credit card information. Otherwise, they'll start charging you when you when you reach your allocated number of queries. Um, so, so basically, all it is is a TFT screen and some female header pins on this piece of perf board, and on the other side, it's a ESP32 with some female header pin so this can just come off and I can put another ESP32 on with different software on it or I can update the software on this particular ESP32 um, but what I've done is I've, I basically I've got two I've got two ESP32 cams and one's got the neural network on it that was in the last video and then one that connects to the Azure so I can I can just interchange them depending upon how I want to use this and then I've got the battery in here I've got this um, 18650 battery shield and it outputs a 5 volt regulated power supply and it's got a um, an on and off button and also a micro USB charger here so um, this all works pretty well um, so I'll show you how how I um, how exactly I've made the software for this in the next scene thank you Oh, okay, so before we continue, I'll just show you um, how I can how I can change this over. So, if I want to use the one with a standalone neural network, I can just pull this off like that, and this is the one with a standalone neural network on it, and I just plug that in here to these to these header pins, uh, which is all soldered on in there, and then this is the power. And this, I've broken out the R, the R and the T for if I want to flash it on here. But I found out it works better if I pull it off and flash it. Okay, so uh, I'll show you now how I set up the, the Microsoft Azure Computer Vision resource. And also how I implemented the REST API in C++ because... Uh, they don't show you how to do it in C++ on the Microsoft homepage. They only show you uh, like C Sharp and Python and Java and JavaScript. So, hey, everyone. 
So the first thing you need is an Azure account with Microsoft Azure and I've just got a free account. You can sign up for a free account which gives you a limited number of queries. Don't give them your credit card information because if you exceed the number of queries with a free account then they'll start charging you. And I also want to say I've got no affiliation with Microsoft at all. Um, so once you sign up for an account you can go to the create resources here. So click on create resources and you create a computer vision resource. So just type computer vision and it should come straight up. There's a lot of number of different resources you can get um, and there's custom vision as well. You can make your own model. So I just use this one for now and um, computer vision create. Um, Azure for students. I've got a student account. You probably think I'm a bit too old to be studying which is probably true actually. And if you don't have a resource group you can create a new one but I've already created one. Um, and then I'm in Australia so I'm going to click Australia East and the name of my resource I'm just going to type my computer vision 3 let's say. Um, pricing tier free which gives me um, 20 calls per minute and 5,000 calls per month okay um, and then I've got to accept the terms and conditions review and create and then it'll come up and then create the resource Okay, once you've created the resource you can click here to go to resource and this will take you into the resource. So here is where your keys are but if you have a look in here if you click on this which is API console it'll take you through all the APIs that you can use to, to um, use this resource. So there's analyze image, there's describe image, detect objects, so I'm going to use the describe image for this project which will return um, basically a, a JSON object with, with tags and text which is a caption. So tags is in what's in the image and then text which is a caption. And there's a number of others you can use here. So um, you can have a look at those and it gives you here, um, it tells you what you what kind of input it expects. So I'm using application octet stream which is just sending the binary image data or you can use data from a from a um, from a URL. And then down here it gives you a number of options like a number of languages to use this API but um, unfortunately C++ with ESP32 or Arduino is not included in these options so I'm going to show you how to implement that on the ESP32 CAM. Um, so once you've done that you have to go here and then you click on keys. So manage keys and what you need is you need the endpoint here and you need the first key to use in your um, to use in your API. So you send that in your HTTP header. So I'm going to go through the code with you now and show you how to manage that. And the other thing they like you to do is once you've done they like you to clean up your resource once you're not using it anymore. So just basically delete it. Okay, thank you. Hey everyone. So I'm just going to go over the classify image function, the classify image part of the code for the Azure DIY Smart Cam. Um, all the other code, all the other supporting code is just a lot of standard ESP32 CAM and ESP32 web server code and a lot of it comes from the uh, selfie cam project that Robot Zero did um, but the classify image um, is really the main the main part of this code which I want to go over and this uses the REST API uh, that connects to the Azure cloud. So um, so basically we we take a photo and this is done in the loop of the code so I've commented it out here um, and then we have to get the buffer and we have to copy it into a string basically a string of characters and the reason we have to copy it into a string of characters is because 
this is the way um, that Microsoft, that the Azure, ex um, the way that the Azure expects the data to be input. Um, so it, so it, it wants you to upload raw binary data, so either PNG or JPEG. So I'm using JPEG here. I haven't tried it with PNG. And then we get the endpoint and the subscription key um, from the Azure website when we um, when we create our computer vision resource. Um, and then this is from the from the documentation which I showed you in the last scene. So we can use describe or object or depends what kind of processing we want. There's a few different ones we can use. And I'm using describe because I wanted to return a caption and some tags. Um, so basically we have to add our headers. So one is content length, which is the length of our buffer, our string buffer. Um, the other one is what type of uh, communication we're using and we're using application octet stream. Um, and then it also accepts multi-platform data, but that one didn't work when I tried it. So this is the one that works with the binary, with the raw binary data. Um, and then of course we have to add our subscription key to the header or else it won't, we will be unauthorized. Um, and once we've done all that, we can post our raw data, our binary data, which is just a, a character string of, of our image, of our JPEG image or our PNG image. And, um, and then we get a response, which is given as a JSON object. And I'm using, I'll show you which, so I'm using, um, JSON, Arduino JSON 5.13.5. And um, this is the one that, that was used on random nerd tutorials that I followed. So I just stuck with it and it seemed to work pretty well for ESP32. Um, I tried another JSON library and that ran out of, that ran out of memory. So um, an out of memory exception, also known as the Nixon defense. Um, all right, so if we scroll down here. So once we get our JSON object, it gets returned in this form. So we get our tags and our caption. So I'm only using the first caption. You get a number of captions, but the first one has the highest confidence and I'm using all the tags. So I iterate through those, through the tags and print them out. And because I don't know the length of the tags, I just wait till it's, it's null, a null pointer, and then I break. Um, and then the text, I just, I just get the first one, which is index zero. And then I've also got this function here, which is to print, um, which is to print the text and the tags to the image and the TFT screen. So I have to do that separately because, um, because if I, if I save the image, it won't save what's printed out on the TFT screen. Um, and then that's about it. That's about all that's changed. And like I've said, if you want to, um, if you want to, um, if you want an idea of what's happening in the rest of the code, you can read through it yourself. It's all pretty standard or you can watch, watch my previous video. And if you have any, uh, questions or co uh, any questions about it, just leave them in the comments and I'll happily answer them. And I've also put all this up on GitHub so you can look through it on GitHub as well. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry. And the other thing I wanted to say, one more thing is that because this is wireless, I have to, and I want to use it when I'm out and about, I'm using it with my iPhone hotspot. So I have two SSIDs. I have SSID and SSID two. And SSID 2 is my home wireless and SSID is my, um, my hotspot for my iPhone. And, um, if it can't find my iPhone hotspot, it'll automatically connect to my home wireless. Um, but I did want to mention something. So, um, if you're using your iPhone, um, make sure that the SSID doesn't have any spaces or apostrophes in it because mine was like this SSID equals Johnny's. So I think that's, that's pretty standard. So what I had to do, I had to go into, 
settings general about and get rid of the space and apostrophe and just change it to that and then it and then it connected quite quite well and the other thing you have to do is you have to go into your um your hotspot your personal hotspot and set it to 2.4 gigahertz um and there's a button for that in there um which doesn't say 2.4 gigahertz but it just says um allow compatibility with with more devices or something like that but it's not that hard to work out um okay thank you like i said any questions or um any questions on this just leave them in the comments thank you hey everyone so this is the interface here for the diy smart camera and this is exactly the same as the interface i used in the last um in the last project and i didn't actually write this interface it comes from uh, Robot Zero One's uh, selfie cam, uh, which is a pretty good project. So it's exactly the same um, JavaScript and HTML and uh, cascading style sheet that they used. Um, but I just I'm just showing the pictures that I've taken and classified with my um, with my DIY smart camera. So if we have a look, we can see the results here, which are pretty good. So this one is a bus with a sign on the door. And that's exactly right. See, there's a little sign there. Um, this is a room with shelves of books, um, a desk with a computer on it. And that's not actually a computer. That's a 3D printer, a TV on a table, which is exactly right. A window in a room. And this, um, this is actually a microwave oven. But if we look at the, at the tags, one of them is kitchen appliance. Um, and then we have a white chair next to a blue wall, um, a circular object with a label on it. So this is a tape measure. And when it doesn't know what it is, I guess it gets a little bit more generic by calling it an object. Um, a car with a flat tire. And we don't know, I'm not sure if that's a flat tire, if it's just the angle it's at, but it, it looks kind of a little bit flat. Um, a frame picture on a wall, um, a black and silver speaker which is the tape measure again, but it does look a little bit like a speaker. And then once I've pulled the tape out, I get a close up of a measuring tape. So it gets it right. Um, a green and blue x-ray. So that is actually just the top of the tomatoes, which it thinks is a group of oranges. Um, a couch with pillows, which is right. Um, a bookshelf full of books. A close up of a yellow and black measuring tape. A yellow measuring tape. Um, a tree fallen on the ground. So this tree hasn't exactly fallen, but the shadow maybe makes it look like it's fallen. A toy car on a table, which was pretty good. Um, now this is interesting. This is a group of ducks in a pond. And they're not exactly ducks. They're pigeons on the footpath, but it thinks they're, they're ducks in a pond, which, I mean, at least they're birds. So that's pretty close. And this says a couple of birds on the ground. Um, and then this one here, this is a picture of my daughter and it says a person with a black t-shirt. I'll just show you that a little bit better. There, a person with a, a person with a black t-shirt. So it seems pretty good. And um, like I said, if you've got any, any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll I'll endeavour to answer them as best I can. Um, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.